side and we heard the stats there from the desk it does not look good the prognosis is not good for optic but they are a team that have continued to surprise us in situations like this they've continued to prove that they have quite some resilience yeah the prognosis is not yet terminal they will start anew on train the countdown has begun optic gaming it's their turn to bring it to as far as i say their turn they chose their turn on the last map didn't work out their choice was taken away on this occasion We'll see if they can get their hands on that trophy. It'll come down to train, at least for the time being. Grenades on to Tarek and Stanislaw. Double smokes and a flashbang. Could they be trying to ensure a bomb plant? Stanislaw outside main for the time being. Rush with a passive angle towards IV. In the meantime, presence being shown towards B. Will that pull a rotation? Glaze on the way through connector. Zipex has backed off closer connector as well. They've got the range advantage with those USP, so they can stay close to connector and then quickly rotate should it be required. Yeah, they really don't mind playing train on the CT side. You don't have to go too crazy in your rotations. You can keep it pretty chill. And at the moment, Astralis seem to be chilling. Just waiting for Optic to make their move. And they do have quite a few players towards Ali now. So they likely want to get that split going. Ali, Popdog, and uh, Team Main. It's, it's a good one. Three players down Ali. This is a very, very troublesome area sometimes to deal with, especially when there's crossfires on the CTs, and you can see that they feel the same way. They're going to show the presence and then back away towards Team Main. And this does pull more CTs probably away from Team Main. So that is probably part of the reason why they're getting themselves in this with these initial maneuvers. So now the push is on. Smoke's being deployed. Glaive for smoke of his own. Trying to reduce the amount of people who can pick him at the same time. Going for the one shot, it's not going to work out. Rush taken down in the meantime, however. The plays on the high ground and the frags are really going back and forth down to the two versus two. 30 seconds, still time for Optic to play with. Got Zipex in the connector and Dupree over towards Ivy. Bomb getting planted for Pop Dog. Who's going to have the positional advantage? Dupree at the very back. We see Mixwell could be taken by surprise. This is dangerous. These are dangerous waters for Mixwell. He could get pinched by both these CTs. Zipex coming through connector now, trying to take him down. Still alive for the time being. In the meantime, Stanislaw's rotating, but it's not much he can do to help his teammate at the moment. Mixwell, oh, he's got one kill at the very least. The bomb's planted very exposed as well. Can Stanislaw be found? Flying kill there. Stanislaw did not have enough HP. Can he get to the bomb fast enough, though? The bomb still needs to be defused. He's got the kit, and that is GG. Yeah, I was kind of worried for a second there. He was kind of scrambling around to find that kit, but he did indeed find it. And you nailed know, the defuse. 1-0, Astralis with the start that they wanted. Now they can get all the guns. And Optic, it's not quite a story, a similar story for them just yet. It will take one round of nothing until they'll bring out the AKs. And that's very likely what they'll do. Some teams, though, do have a force buy here. When you get the bomb plant and the extra $800, you can get the Technize, the full Kevlar and helmet, and have all the grenades. Some teams really like to get the pressure on the CTs immediately with rounds like that, but Optic might be in this frame of mind as well. Maybe if they normally would want to do that, right now they're feeling the pressure because they had a horrible map one. So let's see if they can get a bomb plant or something similar here with just a, a smoke and a flash. Astralis waiting for Optic to make their move. No one in forward positions. Positions that Optic are very fond of on the CT side. Hopefully for Optic, they'll have uh, enough rounds to actually show us the CT side on this occasion. But for now, it's eco rounds. Where will this one smoke be deployed? Tarek joining the crew. Four man on road in the pop dog. Stanislaw outside main. He's the grenade man. Could be going towards connector, perhaps. That'll just cut off the angle from connector towards pop. And here they will emerge. One frag for Astralis. This is an Antico. There's no armor on these players. They know what's happening with that bomb plant. Maybe Tarek on the high ground wasn't the best idea. That bomb is not going to get planted in this round. On to the next one. And the bomb down there is really helpful. It allows the, in, in this third round, to have way more grenades, obviously. Because, you know, if you do if you do get the bomb down on the, on the first round and lose that round and you save, as we just saw, you don't really have enough to get everything. And we're going to see that right now. A limitation on utility. Which does mean that Optic are probably going to think about making a faster play because they can't, they, they, they've just run out of flashes too quickly. Otherwise, you want to have the most impact from those flashes, get the most map control or fragging opportunities from them as you can. So we might see a fast pace indeed. Astralis themselves, they're going to realize that situation and uh, they're going to hang on to these uh, FAMASs. Oh man, that's 60 damage. That's maximum damage. That is pretty brutal. 
Dupree often gets kills from this position, actually. Oh, if no one's going to check this, they may they may feel like that's clear, actually, after just having someone there. That is really bad, because if that means if Estralis delay the push, if they get onto the bomb site, not too, and not quickly enough, Dupree's going to have a, a very, very nasty flank. I love the fast play from Optic. Great shot to the back, but indeed Dupree is here already. Napfly is in for a nasty surprise. Hello and goodbye. There's the bomb as well. And now he can hold the high ground for his team. How do Optic close this round out? Nothing but frags coming from Astralis. Tarek and Huxley. Tarek with a two-man spray down, bringing it straight back, leaving Dupree alone. This is going back and forth. They've got the bomb. They can rotate. Do they know where Dupree is, though? He's got himself two kills. He's got half his HP. The Molotov. Of right from his position when he goes to right angle, though. There it is. Optic take the round. I love the fast play from Optic. There's lots of time on the clock, but again, the default of CT sides these days is to start with one person in the B bomb site. They have the numbers game to their advantage. The flank, though, is still so fast from Astralis. Ever a dangerous team here at ECS Finals. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, Astralis had the perfect play to deal with it. I mean, Dupree was in his position at this insane flank time. He gets two kills immediately on the flank. That's crazy. And he gets to safety as well. And yet, still, Astralis lose the round because Optic's. After the uh, main push in towards the, the deeper parts of the, of the yard were very successful. Crazy. But still, Astralis, they have the AWP onto device. Have a pretty good situation on, on the weaponry overall, but it's, it's the utility where they're lacking. So let's see if Optic will play a slow round now, to, you know, in just in expectation that their opponent has lower mass utility. They want, they want Astralis, they want to pressure Astralis and force them to waste everything before they then go for their play. So there's no counter flashes, no counter incendiaries and so on and so forth to stop the push that Optic want to make. Tarek still with the bomb outside main. That's not the kill that Optic wanted. Two more towards Ivy. Stanislaus made his way up behind the smoke, but how far will he push? Kyabi's in position, device is completely rotated. That's going to burn the clock for Optic. What is ultimately the play for Tarek now? Stanislaw and Rush. Will they try to push their way towards CT? Nice boost coming in, but again, the frags are just not coming for Optic. The grenade won't get the kill onto Rush. He's alive for now, but he needs Tarek. Just about seeing Kyabi. Four seconds. Oh, man. But the time only, is irrelevant. Only one guy died for a shot. That's insane. And Optic, they just won around, James. They just won around. And they only had a couple of players surviving in that round. So they've got nothing left. That is really bad for Optic. It's going to put Astralis massively ahead. And again, it's a round where Astralis had no utility, basically. They had almost nothing going into the mid rounds. So now we see the tech lines come out. Uh, the, the full force buy here because Optic were just so poor. They're going to have to double save anyway after being reset like that. So they're just going to say, okay, let's just get the force buy in. We've got a bunch of nades. We've got tech knives. We've got armors. We've got he uh, helmets as well. And uh, very win uh, these rounds are very winnable on the T side. But not if they lose players early. I do wonder if we're going to see that full sort of smokes towards the A side. Maybe not by looking to show some presence towards B, but it, it will cost him his life. Rush making his way towards the uh, bomb. Now we see the bomb moving towards Ivy. Three players in A for Astralis. They have the numbers advantage. They have the weapon advantage. And at this point, you would have to say they have the psychological advantages. Any any confidence from last week's win for Optic has quickly disappeared following overpass. Three smoke grenades for Optic. Yeah, Optic are unfortunate with Device getting the a pick there, but we'll go into that in a moment because we do have the set piece coming in. And although their their winning chances have dropped with losing Nafly so early. There is still a lot to be done in the chaos. There's still three smokes to launch into this A yard. But Astralis are pushing with Glaive. They've got some good setups here on top of the trains. We see Dupree up there as well. And there's no one coming from Ali, so this should be an amazing defense from Astralis. Optic playing it slowly, though. There goes the flash. And now they start to push in. Glaive is ready and waiting. They're in the smoke. Will they find him? Ooh. Yes! There's a quick headshot from Mixwell. And now they can get some more forward ground here onto the bomb site. The rifle in the hands of the Spaniards is doing work here. Device still alive for the time being. Got support from the teammates as well. The bomb though should get planted. Nothing they can do about that for the time being. Three man retake for Astralis. Can they keep Optic on the back foot? Kyabi close. He's got Stanislaw around the corner as well. Oh, but he's close enough for the tech man for the one tap. Specs sees the jump. Where are the other two players? There's one spotted. But where is the third? Trouble for Astralis. No kit on either of these players. Maybe there's one close. That clock is ticking. 
and they need to find some kills. It's pretty much the pixel on his own. Device doesn't have the HP to deal with this, and that's the round over. Device going to run away, and Optic are back on the scoreboard. Second round for them. Yeah, and that's crazy. And, and, and part of that does show you as well that Optic, they do, they, they have a very good grasp of, of Counter Strike. They, they will always wanted to run this round with, with what they had, all the grenades and the nice and so on. They always wanted to run the set piece on A, but they realized as well that you can't just do it in a really fast timing because there could be pre nades, the initial positions from Astralis, they're going to be on high alert to those kinds of plays, so it's often just going to like fail. What you do want to do is just show presence everywhere because Astralis don't know exactly what they bought, so they try to sp uh, spread out, but there, there's, there is always a small risk that an AWP has pushed somewhere, like Device did, and he'll catch one of your players. Luckily for them, they still had enough grenade grenades to get a good set piece there, and they somehow, in the chaos, make it work. So back in two uh, rounds against three now, and Astralis didn't get a chance to build money, so this is perfect for Optic. This buy from Astralis absolutely sucks. <laughs> yeah. Well, double mag seven. Never, Rush, never fails. Rush with a great pop flash for anybody playing close on the CT side from the ramp. We've seen Tepex close there with uh, high explosive grenades. Always good to have such precautions. Pop flash for Dupree again with the shortcomings of their buy. They take aggressive plays. And Dupree there. Maybe they can uh, forget some Vikos back. Getting wall banks. Might force them back a little bit. This will waste time for Optic as well. Stratus can, can uh, keep five alive to the sub 40 second mark, then there may be problems. Dupree in a strong position to get. Oh, there it is. Not fatal though. 20 HP for Nafly. Good start for Optic. He was inspecting his weapon, James. He was inspecting his weapon. Device is going to find the push now. And if they can just neutralize Device as a threat, they should be okay. However, Sipix finds himself a kill to Max 7. That's a gun to be collected. And Glaive, he's going to find a flank in the spoke. Max 7 no! comes in. Where's the frags at? Nothing for Glaive. That's a massive loss there. Mixwell turning around and dealing with him. But still chances here for Astralis. Still two left alive, including Device on the orb. Sipex in connector. Made himself known with those shots and Device will take control of that distraction. Zipex stops the while trying to plant, plant the bomb as well. At least Rush alone. He knows where Zipex was. But where could he be? He needs to go and retrieve that bomb. Zipex biding his time. He knows there's no time for Optic to rotate, so he will just wait for that plant attempt to come in. Rush will surely go for a fake. No, he's going to commit. Out comes Zipex. He's in headshot position, and there it is. Straight in the face. Astralis, 4-2. to two. James, Zipex got three kills on Mag7 in this round. That is that nice. is nice. <laughs> that is very nice. Marvelous, in fact. And he picks up the AWP. I mean, Device hit an, a stunning shot there on the player in window. Very, very nice stuff there from Astralis. Flexing their uh, their muscles. Always able to pull out massive performances. What a, what a steal that was. Beautiful steal from Astralis. And that leaves uh, Optic once again in a really weird position on the money. They don't have much much money, but they have enough to buy on a few players. So again, we're likely to see, I think, a similar round. They may just go B to mix it up, but with the buy that they have, three AKs, Tech-9, and, and a UMP, and a handful of grenades, we're going to see the chaos outside again. And look at Astralis' situation as well. They're not too healthy on the money either. A lot, There's a lot riding on this round. Optic moving quickly towards the B-bomb site. Specs will hear the footsteps. Players straight into that. can warn his teammates. There might be a fast one in towards A. But what can they do in reaction? Oh, Tarek from out of nowhere. Device gets fully ruined. Can the bomb go down though? Another kill for Tarek. This is not a good start for Astralis against the big round. Both teams with no money in the bank and the CTs are falling like flies. A lot, of, a lot of damage has been done though, as we see all these tag players for optics. So there is definitely a chance here. And already Astralis have found their way onto the bomb sites, onto the bomb train. But look at how everybody's fanned out here for optic. They've taken very deep positions just surrounding the bomb site. And guys just standing on the site, desperately waiting for someone to peek. Will someone please peek? Doesn't look like that's the case though. And it looks like they just want to save the AWP onto Zipex, perhaps. Unless something happens here. Glaive does pick up a frank, but still, they're not liking their chances. It's so hard to get those kills on a post plant. And Naf might be able to remove these weapons as well. Tough times for us both. Despite the lead, that leads to disappearing. At least they can hold on to their weapons. And for now, no one else close enough to take them away. Another round on the board for Optic. They keep the, the gap quite narrow indeed. But there's an AWP on the server, and that is not good. It's been thrown over to Device, and he's going to buy some armor around it. Astralis calling a tactical timeout, trying to decide how best to use what they have in this round. 
up to gaming. One can expect a slow round from them as they try to identify where device is and even neutralize him or exploit a hole elsewhere. Yeah, I'm glad we're seeing the force buy out of Astralis here because, again, saving the AWP and the M4. Okay, the other players, they don't really have much in the way of cash, but still, this, this map, you can do a lot on the force buys for the CT, for the CT side because you can force all these close range engagements, all the trains to play around. It's, it's very difficult for the T side to deal with. And on top of that, yeah, they have the AWP on the device. So, with Optic's money being very low, this this round this is this is just insane. This the way this matchup is going. Optic might just hit outside again, James. They might just keep going outer. It's been working pretty well for them. Why stop now? Why stop a good thing? Look at those rounds being traded back and forth. No one with uh, real consecutive rounds beyond the first buy round for both sides. Maybe this will be it for Optic. Astralis, trying to play a reactive game, a proactive game, rather. Device and Glaive quickly rotating towards B-bomb site. They've rotated Kyabi as well. They've got some kind of mad read that it could be an early play in towards the B-bomb site. But that's not the case, not just yet. Again, I think they can get slow. But Astralis, they have to be active with the weapons they have. These are the most awkward angles. <laughs> wow, look how well Dupree plays this position. They, they know that he's still there, it seems. But he is just avoiding all the damage. This is actually incredible from Dupree. And they feel like they've done the job there. They, they probably feel like they've done the job, but Dupree's still in that position. He's actually going to fade away now a little bit. But they're going to move into the vice, into the B play. So it looks like the hunch here was correct. Moving into the setup. It's looking fantastic here for Astralis. There's no one left. Everyone's been wiped out. Mixwell is the last man standing against four players. Wow. The vice going absolutely wild there with the AWP. That was a pretty nice save. Thank you very much, Mr. Zipix. The trades continue. But you see, they, they threw a smoke, I think, but uh, Nafly makes his way down before the smoke comes in, and they know they're playing against the Norp. And wow. they, they just emerge before the smoke, the smoke blooms, and it costs them. It costs them dearly. And it's Optic. who are down to the pistols. The force by continues. Three to five. Grenades here and there for the uh, T side. Pop flash them their way through any ag early aggression, but Astralis in this position will be mad to go for an Ivy push in this round. Three players, including the bomb, towards Ivy. For Device's form is scary. <laughs> Very scary right now. It is so awesome to see him hitting this form. That is a lot for Optic to, to, uh, to deal with. And already taking some damage early on, too. On the subject of form, again, uh, as you heard Lepis say, uh, Nafly had the game of his life at the E-League finals. We're nine rounds, we're eight rounds in. This is the ninth round, and he's got one kill. And again, Russia's got two kills. They have fallen off the cliff. But perhaps they will try to send Astralis off the cliff in this situation, in the chaos, just creeping up onto the bomb train. Where do they come from? Astralis are wondering. Now Kyabi has to clean up. He's got Zipex coming in from connected to help him out as well. Oh man, Rush turning around, just sweeping that mouse all the way across the pad to get rid of Kyabi. Now Zipex with eight points of health. A very unlikely round here. Looking to be won, and indeed it will be won by Optic. Nuts. No one can win consecutive rounds, it seems. Doesn't matter what the buys are like. Force buy after force buy after force buy being won. What is what will this trollist choose? Will it be another force? They know the money's going to be low, and indeed, they're going in. They managed to muster an AWP for device. We've wow. seen what, what they did with a crap buy previously. And this buy might even be better than that one, or very similar to it at the very least. How do they buy an, an AWP? I thought they were. I have no they, idea. Do they make it out of from. rubber bands and sticks the and twigs? Style. Well, let's see. We've got a fast play into the A bomb site from Optic Gaming. Not going to allow Astralis to adjust as they have in the past. Will it be enough, though? So far, so good for Rush. Two plays taken down for him. The AWP is still alive, but can he get into position? Well, that is that is a rough way to go. Astralis not even having a look in, in this round, and it seems that finally one team will be able to string around together. That is great for Optic. They are really fighting hard, and you can see why no one wants to count them out. Well, waiting for it. Kirby gives it to him. Now it's Device's turn, though. Will he receive Tarek in his reticle soon? Battle of patience here. Patience is key as a -D, an AWP a -D, player. A -D, a -D, a -D. No more D. No more D. 
but there's another one coming. And that's lots of D. Oh! There we go. It looks like Device will hold on to his AWP after all. There's not much Astralis can do around this sniper rifle. Finally, we have some consecutive rounds. Five to five, though, is the score. Again, Optic Gaming, one game down. The thing is, though, James, is that Astralis actually have an AWP because of that save of Device there. They actually still have an AWP in play. And whenever that's the situation, it can always get a little bit weird. That said, Astralis aren't purchasing anything else. They just, they just have the USP, USPs and the AWP that was saved. But you can never count out the AWP on Device. Can Optic circumvent the AWP? That Ooh. is the question. Ooh. Oh no, <laughs> that's, that's a beautiful kill. But there it is, the AWP is gone and it's irretrievable. Yeah, it might be unless Glaive could get over there past uh, Tarek's angle. Indeed, Tarek's not peeking, so Glaive will be able to collect the AWP. But what can they do with it? Glaive will find out if he's got any AWPing prowess. That's a nice shot, but not a fatal one. And that's pretty much the round over. Optic Gaming. Going to take the lead finally against Astralis. Zipex will presumably going to try and uh, either get a, I thought maybe he's trying to get a knife kill that or he'll try to uh, recover the sniper rifle, but Rush is over there, making sure it's protected. You can see Zipex hunting for that gun now. He might not survive from this position, but he wants to do as much damage as he can. The money's tight for both teams. Where is the AWP though? Rush, you see him just standing around it, using it as bait. He drew in the fish and then he gutted it. Optic are really making half of this. This is insane stuff. But Astralis are back on the buy. The, the key thing though is that there's no AWP for Astralis. So that's going to be, that's, I mean, that might change how they want to play this round out. They might want to get a bit more aggressive towards T main and play uh, a rifler setup close to Pop Dog as well as T main. That could be, you know, one way they might interpret this. But I doubt we'll see them having such passive positions with no AWP in play. Glaive is moving forwards there towards the E-Box. There's a uh, player with him as well. That's going to be Dupree. He's been commonly playing Pop Dog. And either it's a forward setup, but not all the way. Not committing all the way for a push into enemy territory. But they have normal Stone Ace. They've got two smokes and two flashbangs with a minute 30 left. That is not a good place to be on the CT side. Yeah, those counter flashes are going to have to be the best counters of all time. Device on the B-Bomb site with Zipex. And again, as far as with two players very close to Pop Dog. We could see some more fast rotations. We'll obviously be ready for it, though. It's proved uh, effective for Astralis already on this train. But here they come. The numbers game spreading out on the high ground. Device, can he find a fatal kill? Yes, he can. Nice headshot. Hiding behind the smoke. But he needs support. His teammates around connected, but they're stuck behind the flames. Device surely spotted now. Double peak ready for the team side. They're waiting for him to emerge. There's Rush. Can he get a kill, though? Very, very laboured at this point. Dupree will take down Nap. And Kirby trying to get as well. It will force the mix well. But Dupree is there, and that's going to be the round for Astralis. It was a very hard round to win, but they read it. They read the situation so incredibly well. Just as you said, they, they set up that flank. They had, it seemed like they had all the players in the right places. And Optic Gaming, they still have some money in the bank to buy with, so it's not over just yet as far as their buys are concerned. But again, Astralis have been ta uh, taxed. They lost so many players there. Their buy looks crap as well. They've, only, they've got a UMP in the, in the mix, but at least they've got nades this time. That's an improvement. Kyabi's going for a push on his own through the IV position behind the smoke at the very least. Some warning grenades from Optic. We'll see if support comes his way. Device is uh, closing on his position now. So maybe Device will end up being the bait. Three players plus QRB towards the A site. Again, standard stuff. Zipex on his own towards B at the beginning. No fast play from Optic at the moment. And again, we are into the last three rounds of the first half. Bomb moving around the Pop Dog, and now there are more players being drawn towards the IV position. Yeah, it looks like they might actually try to commit in there. It's a possibility. A lot of teams will actually fall back with a couple of players, and sometimes even all of them. It's just to essentially force the CTs to adjust their setup so that they can incorporate more more control towards the alley position. And that allows easier entry on the front of the bomb site towards Team Main and Pop Dog. But actually, yeah, they're going to go with three men here. Kirby with nice angle. Can't get anything really from it though. Rush with the frag. And now things are getting a little bit tricky here for Astralis. They're able to find the bomb though. They've got the bomb by Evox. This is a massive problem. Dupree still there as well. Even if Dupree goes down there in this trade, he's got Glaive and Pop Dog. So how does one go down? Rush with 11 HP. 
Need to collect the bomb. He's got three to find as well with this AK. And he's got 25 seconds with which to do it. That flashbang doesn't work out. But really, the time is against Rush in this situation. Space backing off now. Lovely angle from him. And Astralis will take the lead. Very tight game between these two sides. It's so it's so interesting that we've never seen either either team have money. There's just never really a situation where anyone's ever had any money. It's made for a lot of exciting moments so far, but this is going to be another round where there's not much to really accomplish for Optic. They have some Tech Nines, they've got uh, some grenades to work with to maybe get onto a bomb site, to maybe get past some of the annoying choke points. But beyond that, I mean, it, it's hard to expect much. Oh dear, Wave going to be missing that incendiary. That is unfortunate for him. Sipex with the early Molotov, he hears footsteps towards the B bomb site. He has no support, and again, the fast play on the high ground from Optic could work perfectly in this situation. That one man vulnerable towards the B bomb site. Tarek pushing forward as well, trying to get map control for his team as the bomb goes down. Range to the advantage of Astralis, but they have to close that range if they want to win this round. We've got a flank coming in as well. We've got Rush is looking for it. Dupree on the high ground can entertain him. That weakens the defense of the B bomb site at the same time. So problems for Optic. Numbers dropping. Two plays picked off though. Almost a third, but not quite. Tarek on his own. He's got an AK. No armor. He'll have aim punch if he gets seen. There it is, Zipex finishing things off. Three plays surviving for Astralis as they move towards eight to six. One round remains in the first half. Yeah, what a rocky first off to speak for both teams. Astralis looking to uh, finally edge out an advantage in rounds, but this one could be very, very different as far as uh, how it looks as compa compared with the last one, because we got the York back on Mixwell, and he's likely going to be looking for some opening picks early on in the rounds. So it might be a bit of Mixwell versus device action that we are going to see here early on. I would like to see that. I want to see that all battle, but uh, not every time we're going to see them take the same angles. Although with this time we might. Device is uh, in the vicinity of Alley, and that's exactly where Mixwell's going. Device <coughs> concentrating on main for the time being, going to Ivy. And Mixwell has come and gone very quickly indeed. Again, it's the last round of the first half. Astralis looking to create another canyon between these uh, teams in terms of score. No idea what happened there, but uh, lovely angles being found by the T side. That boost paying off over the smoke. They'll be looking to prey on Optic, uh, maybe not checking their position, but he will hear them running away from Ivy at the very least. So Dupree knows that potentially people are coming his way. Yeah, this is really interesting, this development. That frag there by Pop, kind of changed things for Optic after losing Mixwell. I think they were just in, in the mind of, okay, guys, we're four versus five. We need to just get in here together, just coordinate in for a split, and then they get the pick off. That changes the CT setup. And they're allowing, they're using the time in the round to actually better better find another attack, which is really smart from Optic. Again, showing how well they understand the game. And they're going to go for the set piece onto the A bomb site. They do have a lot of grenades to do that with. But the problem is going to be the initial defenders in, Dupri in the likes of Dupree. Device on the bomb site. His vision is as good. There are gaps. Not going to fail for him though. Flashbang goes down. So does the bomb. Debris on the high ground side. Great work. Still a man advantage for the CT side. Time again against Optic. The flank. Kirby coming in from the back. Bomb finally collected by Optic, but he's just playing the information game. Kirby giving info to his team. Stanislaw remains on the site. 15 seconds to plant the bomb. Can't get the second last kill. Astralis 9 to 6 in the first half. Man, Optic fought so hard in this one. I don't know the last time I saw so many rounds, Force Buys traded and traded over and over again. How many Force Buys did we have in a row? It was like six or something. So yeah, Astralis, they get that lead. That they, that's why they picked the CT side. That's, why, that's where they know they're comfortable. We've seen how comfortable they have been there across the entire tournament. But now Optic have to do the same thing. Is the, the question now is, is it enough? Did Optic do enough with six rounds on their T side? I have a pause coming in from Astralis. If I'm not mistaken, we had one, two, three, four, five, six, at least seven force buys in a row before a consecutive round was won by Optic. That is ridiculous. That is insane. So indeed, there's a force buy. Uh, force buy. There's a there's a timeout. I think it's a tactical timeout. I suppose. Maybe just trying to figure out what they want to do in this pistol. Oh, they want to drink on top. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose it's technical timeout. I'm I'm thirsty. Nothing but Kevlar on the optic side on his CT pistol for them. Device and Glaive with double flashbang and smoke. So we'll see what they have. Again, two, two uh, T's on utility. 
has become quite common as of late. Yeah, I think it's the way forward. I think anything you can do Oh dear, they missed one of the smokes. That's a bad miss. Anything you can do to guarantee a bomb plant, even if you lose the round, that is that is definitely where you want to be. Because at least you get the AKs in straight away. You can play pressure straight away. If you don't do that, there's a couple rounds where the CTs can get off to a lot of money. A lot of a very good start. Look at this position from Stanislaw. He is already super forward towards B. That allows Optic to keep four people on the A bomb site. They're perfectly positioned, but headshot first comes in from Stranis. Epic is leading with the jumps. Look how annoying it is to deal jumping clocks. Very, very stressful stuff. Naf takes him to the side of the face, leaving Stanislaw on his own against five players. That sucks. Here he goes down the ladder. That's a not a very favorable engagement. And indeed, Device will take it down. Not a single player lost for Astralis. It's waltzing in, waltzing in through Alley, and then winning the round. Burst fire, boys, for that final kill. Super Mario Brothers coming down Ivy. Look at this. It's like the mouse has a, it has a mal malfunction. It's jumping all over the place, avoiding, avoiding being headshot. And the first person, even if he's jumping, he becomes a meat shield. We saw Mixwell doing that on a previous pistol this weekend. Very, very frustrating to deal with. That's the start that Astralis wanted. Heading towards a potential victory, potential revenge on Optic. Stanislaw with big popper pump. He's got the Scott Steiner close towards B. Will anybody dare emerge through that smoke? Already, there's a pistol kill for Optic. And yeah, that is an interesting start for them. Astralis, though, they're not messing around. They've got all four players together. And they will move them onto that B-bomb site in unison. Sanislois, he's got the shotgun. Oh, unfortunately, gets nothing from it. Big popper pump has been retired. And now it's going to be a four versus four with the bomb down. A much less favorable situation here for the Optic gaming side. Again, Astralis with great use of those smokes, making things very unfavorable for Optic. They try to force their way through Connector at the very least. Device gets his bell rung, still alive for the time being, and he will be a distraction while he is alive. In the meantime, where are these kills going? Not in favor of Astralis. The, C's, the CTs continue to charge it. and the jumping close this out. He can't. And now it's down to Zipex alone. There's no kit on these two players. Rush trying to force the aggression, but he hasn't got the HP to do it. That leaves Tarek alone. Zipex knows the bomb's not being defused. All Tarek can do now is go for the kill. Manages to do that, but the round goes to Astralis, and Tarek will not survive this. Five round lead for Astralis. That's a really good, uh, that's, that's a lot of good damage, to be honest, from Optic, but like, at this point, Astralis with so many rounds in advantage, they're going to feel gutted. They were not able to convert that first frag. But again, it does, it does show you that Astralis, you know, they're not going to be a team that panics when they lose somebody quickly. They're like, no, we know exactly what to do here. We're all going to be combining, run this set piece, it's all calm, it's all considered and they get the result they needed. 11 to 6 indeed is where we stand, and it's only going to get a little bit worse here for Optic because they're stuck on pistols. They have to save, and this time they aren't investing anything. It's just a couple P250s and a dream. Four players for Optic around A. Waiting for the inevitable, surely. That's a nice start for Kyabi. Highlight real kill there. Max head charging in. Device, though, has an uh, enemy behind him. Enemy's taken down by Dupree, leaving Stanislaw alone. They know he's the B player. Someone needs to collect the bomb, maybe? So this round may drag on for a little bit more. Optic Gaming will soon have half the score of Astralis. Yeah, sightings look very bad indeed for, for them. And the Orps are going to start rolling in very soon. Device has definitely been more on point than Mixwell. That's what we've seen so far. That AWP versus AWP battle on this map is incredibly crucial. Mixwell's going to pick himself up an AWP, as will Device. And once again, we might just see them both fight off early on. So, Device, where will he choose to go? Where will Mixwell choose to go? Full nades here for Astralis, but again, they're going to feel that uh, Optic may, may be a little bit weak on some of the grenades. Mixwell himself has none, so it's a situation where they can very well try to play slowly and draw out a lot of grenades. Good play, tossing in a, a quick one there. Just to get his uh, a quick uh, flash to get Zipex into a forward position. So it actually looks like Astralis want to go for a fairly quick round here. All depends on what device can find on Ali, and there's not too many CTs in, in the vicinity for him to capitalize upon. I think they'll also be waiting for... Zipex to have a CT, walk into his crosshair. Rush has a good angle though, but maybe Astralis players towards main will run distraction 
and perhaps they won't realize where Zipex is quite yet. Smoke down towards Ivy. And again, Glaive is just baiting for Zipex, just jumping around main, backwards and forwards, looking perhaps for somebody to overextend, but will they? This is the, the baiting from Glaive you see here. Rush, though, he's close to Zipex, but he's focusing towards main. They've given up some real estate thanks to that smoke. Potential crossfire if required, but uh, Mathlife's angle, Rush can't necessarily help him if help is needed. So, who's going to make a mistake first? That's the question. Oh, that is nice damage. Rush doesn't get the kill, though, but he puts a device down to 15 HP. In goes the pop flash. Oh, a completely wish there. Rush is full, well, has all the vision, but he doesn't have the frag. It's Naf, though, that gets two kills. Astralis moving forwards regardless. Mixwell has to get something. Misses, and device, he will not miss. Stanislaw against three now, rushing in with the M4, trying to find a way to do something in this position. They haven't planted yet, so there might be an opportunity for Stanislaw. Lovely smoke towards Ivy. They know Stanislaw's the B player. The, so they planted for Pop Dog and plugged a hole with a smoke. But will they have the angle? I think Device is uh, waiting with the AWP. Covering Zipex's back as well. How does Stanislaw get back into this round? Not sure he can. He doesn't have a kit either. So uh, he's pretty much just holding, trying to take some weapons away, maybe steal an upgrade. Could pick up this AK on the floor towards the end of this round. But here comes Zipex jumping once again. He will continue to make a nuisance of himself. Another round in the bag for Astralis. The level Astralis are on right now is very, very scary. That is for sure. They are quite fearsome in every respect. And now they're only three away from taking this grand final and reasserting themselves as one of the best teams in Counter-Strike. Because not only have they performed very well recently. They are crushing people. They are crushing through this tournament. Can Optic stop them? They're on a, a half buy at the moment. A few Deagles, some, some Kevlar. That's it, though. Again, you can't ask too much from that, but they need everything from it. They're three away from losing this one. Stanislaw and Nafly with very aggressive positions towards the B bomb site with these pistols. Glaven Dupree in position to uh, pinch the B bomb site should they be successful going through Ivy, but Rush is waiting there. Warning shot being fired from his Deagle. How far will Stanislaw Nafly go? The still on the floor around main, but Zipex, he has the information now. How do Astralis react to this? They know they have lost a lot of map control, so Vice's got to be careful. Down he goes. Can that all be collected? That's a start. That's a start. There's a minute left, though. Astralis still have some time to maneuver, some time to work out the situation. Previously, when this happened, they all came together, hit a bomb site with some grenades, and everything went fine. Marvelous weapon disposal unit called Kiabi. Into the skip it goes. Into the skip. I think they have skips here, James. And they call it something else in America. I have no idea. But big, big thing with trashing it. Into the big thing with trashing it. Also known as a skip. With the Deagle, this is the moment. If he gets a couple kills here, this is everything. Oh, he's walking into the cross, but Naf just can't quite find the shot. And that's going to be a free B-bomb site for Astralis. So we have a rotation from Tarek, but uh, he won't have seen the AWP that was sitting on that skip. It was hanging off the side. Could have been something to save, but they know nothing about it. Dupree looking for CT to eliminate Stanislaw close. Not the two-man spray down. Glaive will hear the footsteps, but he has a bomb to protect for the time being. We have Rush looking for some shenanigans on the B-bomb site as well. But indeed, Astralis look likely to march to their 14th round. Tarek, if he jumps up, he might see the AWP. Look at that. There's a present for him. <laughs> wow. That's awesome that he just found that. Look at this. I have this now. That's like when you're walking down, down the street and you sit down on the bench and you find there's just 20 quid on the floor, James. Nice. It's just on the floor. I love that. That is a money saver for them. They had the money to buy it anyway, but who knows? Maybe that money comes into play. Maybe it allows someone to have more grenades or a kit, some round winning utility, perhaps. Nafly going to be orping. Mix while picking up the second one. So there we go. And there's lots of, lots of ways to go with this too. I mean, you can get a pretty aggressive if you're going to go double offs, or you can play it the opposite way and just play very passively. And but uh, Nafly bought the second AWP instead of Mixwell. Mixwell had the money to buy utility as well, so they could have managed the money a, a little bit better there, but it is what it is. Please continue. 
Yeah, we already see the first uh, orb spotted there in Naf. Device is hungry for the kill that Naf is just retreating at the moment, playing an off-angle onto Ali now. Doesn't want to re-peek it. I don't blame him, especially with the form that Device is in right now. And Astralis, they're just uh, setting things up for that push onto A. But they'd really like a pick-off if possible first. But I don't think Optic, Optic are going to give that to them. Astralis starting very slow. But they still have time. They have lots of time. They've got two players towards Ivy. They're deploying some grenades, but they have few grenades left. They do have two smokes, however. Moving away from Ivy now. That smoke asking questions of Optic Gaming. Maybe keeping players closer towards Ivy. But Optic have good positions. They have Stanislaw very far back towards the B bomb site, so it seems they're going to play retake over there. What is the play of Astralis, though? Yeah, moving in for the push now with the grenades. The defense has been broken. The front of it, at the very least. Mixwell still alive. So there is still someone left here providing the frags. And Astralis, they didn't quite get the ground, the forward movement they needed to get onto the plant just yet. Mixwell is problem number one. And he is still lurking with that AWP. And there's still work to be done. They are waiting to see if he's going to peek them. Now as well. The back lines with the AWP. Shot missed. They well, really need Stanislaw to rotate. He's still on the B bomb site. That's the bomb down. He needs to get there quickly. But he's making his way towards Popdog. So that's going to make it impossible for Astralis to get the bomb down. There it goes again. And now there's no more time for them to plant the bomb device trying to escape. Counter terrorists win. The orbit device can survive. We get to kill on the Sandslaw, but he does get traded in the end, though. So, Orb gone. And that's something really important frag, actually, for Optic Gaming. Get, getting rid of the Orb from Device. Obviously, uh, right now, the Astralis could buy another Orb, but their money is very, very stretched at this point. We're going to see a Max 7 onto Stanislaw. So, effective gun on train. Mixed all definitely missing a few shots here. Yeah, it's been, that's been the case for the last few days, and that's worrisome. I mean, Train is one of the maps where we've seen insane highlights from Mixwell with the AWP in horrible situations. We need to see those today if he is to keep his team in this game. That's not a good start for Stanislaw. Again, he's been playing B alone so often. But uh, sorry, they won't, need, they won't feel the need to capitalize and take some risks going through that smoke. They don't know what lies behind if there are more players. And time is on their side. They will stretch the CTs. See Nafly starting to push Ivy now. And one thing as well that's really interesting is that I think Astralis wanted to try to get an edge on Ali, but as soon as that kill came in, they're in a five versus four. They changed their plan immediately not to take this risk. Ooh, the burst comes in. Naf nailing Kirby. That is an important aggression. They needed to find something. He's going back to the well. Going back. But is the well poisoned? Oh, it looks like it's good. It's crystal clear. And that's going to be one more frag for Naf. Three versus three here. And that should actually be a pretty, a fairly decent situation for Optic. Minutes on the clock for Astralis. Problem is, they're out of position. Now we've got Tarek trying to capitalize on Nas' distraction. He's starting to push through B. That allows him to keep his other two players on A. How far forward will he go, though? Oh. Smoke towards Ivy. Lovely timing from Rush. Punishing Device for getting cheeky. Well, this is not going in this situation. Tarek can back off after that spray. He's got time to do it. Lovely Molotov. 30 seconds left. Astralis running out of options. Yeah, but it's not over yet. They're going to find their way onto the A-box site. 25 seconds. Smoke goes down to avail the plant, but the CTs are close. They are looming. They could potentially go through the smoke. They're trying. But, oh, Zipex finds himself the spray. Great cover of fire there for Glaive. And they both retreat to Pop Dog. This is a very interesting situation now. More grenades from both sides to try to get the edge in this two versus two. Oh, look at this cheekiness. They're boosting over the smoke to try and stop the plant from being diffused. Morning, Tarek. They know the fuse is not coming in, but he could get two man sprayed down. I've got to be careful. Glaive has 9 HP. How do you stop it? He can't stop it. Another round for Optic. Gimmick plays, but they have their issues. Seven rounds behind. Seven rounds, or rather, sorry. Six rounds of deficit for them now as they win that one. Optic, can they claw it back all the way? Or on to mix. Well, full nades for everybody. Astralis. Not the same story, not the same story. They are kind of broke. Might see a bit of a half life from them, but actually they they could they could actually spend a bit more money here, but they decide not to. Playing it very, very conservatively. And I actually like that a lot because it means that they will get more buy rounds potentially later. There are a lot of rounds left and they only need two of them. And buy rounds are their best chance to get those. So why not have as many as you can possibly have? This could be scary though. Stanislaw is not really on point. Yeah, I think he blew his load in the last map down. He's got six kills. He's playing the B bomb site, but we've had a T half already. 
We've had a T-half already. Yeah, you're right. It's only six kills for Stanislaw. He will have uh, some additional help on the B bomb site just now. They rotated somebody in. That is going to be Mr. Tarek. And now playing at better ranges. So this is fantastic. An alteration to the setup. And it's uh, perfect to deal with the situation. Tarek, he wants some more frags himself. He'll be pushing forward to find out where the remainder of Astralis are. But they go for the rotation. So easy cleanup here for Optic after all. And uh, a formality. But or is it? Maybe Zipex can do some more here. Yeah, they're far back on the B bomb site. He has an M4. He doesn't have any armor. Waiting for that spray to come in. Lots of nades as well. Doing well to avoid it. And again, he's got time on his side. No commitments from Optic. Not going to get too close to B just yet. Zipex finally emerges. We have good timing. He can get a one versus one with Nafly here. Or even Sanet's lock. Spotted. Trying to avoid. So far, so good. Can he get the bomb down though? Very awkward for Zipex. And they continue to push. But wow. he's done more damage than you would have expected in that round. That Five rounds now between the two sides. That was actually a godlike play from Zipex. Like finding his way, like how does he navigate through all the spray there? Then he has to kind of understand, okay, what are the most likely positions? Okay, guy's still spraying. I think he probably in this position finds his way in the perf into the perfect blind spot. Could have gotten what that kill pretty quickly. And then there's a second guy maybe available as well. That was just, I mean, talk about like getting the most out of very little. That is, that's Zipex right there. And, Squeezing the juice from the lemon. All the juice was squeezed. But Strauss have a big buy now. What are they going to do with it? They don't have an AWP, so not likely uh, not going to be playing too much for picks, but more for just map control and pressure. As much as you can get map control-wise on this map. Oh, the push comes in. Pop flash play. Tarek in onto the device there. That is nice. Also, also some great information, as well as the kill in City main. That's the signature aggression that has been missing from Optic so far. But it's good that even against the odds, when they're down, when Astralis are two rounds away from winning the match, they're not afraid to play their game. And that kill rotates Astralis away from the IV position towards main. They don't know what's going on there. And this will waste time for them trying to find out if anyone's there. If their plan is A, they need to clear that area out. There are a few nooks and crannies where people can hide. But now they'll see it's clear. Um, Molotov's coming in from the uh, CT's cup. He could, could get barbecued here. Two players spotted towards, make that three towards main. One picked off. Tarek, can he find these players? Standing in the smoke of 3 HP is Gabi. And it's Glaive to save his bacon. Four versus two though. Optic in good stead at the moment. Yeah, there's no health on the remainder of Astralis. You can't expect much out of them. Rush, he's single-handedly just crushed this round. Picks up the remaining kills as well. But he did a lot of damage to other players other than just the ones that he fragged. Lovely stuff, Mr. Rush. Four rounds away now at Optic, so this is starting to become a reality for Optic. This comeback, it's been such, they were working against such a deficit. Astralis won actually nine rounds in a row before this streak of rounds here from the Optic side. Yeah, this is the, that's the fourth round victory in a row for Optic, so Astralis heading towards that max loss bonus. They can afford a few things more. Slightly nicer, thing, nicer things on their uh, eco round here. $3,400 coming their way, which means the buyers will be back on the big green gun. And that's a bad miss. Rush, close to his teammate Nafly, in case any help is required. Some nasty sounding pot shots from Zipex, but nothing fatal just yet. Galeb, though, has got himself into a very forward position. Mixed well, is he prepared for this? He's flashed, he's in the connector. Does he have any help? Galeb sees an arm. Oh no, this is going to be really awkward for Mixed well. He's got help now. Oh, will, it be, will it be paying off? Yes, it will. In time, Zipex goes forward, but still no kills for Astralis. Just device remaining with the bomb. As a deagle, though. Let's see what he can get out of it. Oh, rush. Unaware, but aim punch is not your friend. Devices get taken down in the end after one kill. Three rounds away now. A deficit of three. Just doesn't seem quite so bad anymore. And Astralis, they've got to be worrying because they've been in this position before. They're going to feel like with the, the advantage that they had, with the amount of rounds in a row that they got, that if they lose this, that they would have thrown it away. That's probably how they're going to feel. So if they're taking a timeout, this is the perfect time to do it, to just you know, get that confidence back, assemble a plan, get everybody on the same page. Money's not terrible for the Optic team. See Mixwell, Stanislaw, seven plus thousand dollars, and that's like close to six. So there are more orbs in future, should they be required, should purchases need to come in. Device back on the, on the orb. 
Astralis asking themselves, how do we change up the game? Optic have shown some aggression. Can we exploit that? Can we wait for that? Can we position ourselves? Should they choose to uh, extend into our territory once again? Nine Molotovs on the map. Always good to see. And as per usual, Stanislaw on his own towards the B bomb site. Specs will charge over there very quickly, and there may be a larger focus towards B here from Astralis. Round B and Pop Dog are four of the five players pre entertaining towards Ivy. Optic playing two in connector in case any fast rotations required, and maybe it will be. That's important. That is very important. But Stanislaw is very low, and they know where he is. Surely, at this point, he can only be in so many spots. Glaive's going to find him. Look how quickly they're moving down the yard. The Vice finds himself at Kalonta Tarek, and now massive problems coming in for Optic Gaming. They they're getting locked out of Connector. That is so terrible for Optic. I don't know how they're going to bring themselves back in. They have to go through CT, and, that and Glaive knows exactly that. All coming from different directions now, these CTs. Glaive's position, though, is wonderful. Nafly will be at a disadvantage if he jumps. He manages to spot Glaive. Glaive repositioning, very smart. Still an advantage. Glaive looking for the flank, but after these Molotovs, Kyabi taken down in the meantime. No one checking the six here for these players, but Device has gone down as well. Glaive needs to find some frags. The Diffuse is coming in as well. Now he's going to by Dupree. How much time is there? Kimmings will get there. No, he can't. He's Brian Connector. Astralis moving to match point. Finally, we see the fast play in towards the B bomb site. So many teams default with one player. Astralis managed to play that fast round and make it work. You see the support there for Optic in the crowd. They're going to need it because Astralis have found a formula perhaps that works. That was a beautiful round from them. And I mean, Rush just exploding there to make a, what will look like a lost round actually doable. Now what do Astralis go to? Th their money's not actually great. So if Optic are able to stop them here, and prevent themselves from just losing the best of three. They have the ability to have the advantages in multiple oncoming rounds, so this is a big one to stay focused on, fully focused on, to pull it over the line for Astralis. If they lose this round, I think overtime is very, very much a possibility. Astralis get it done. You can see, trying to use the Molotovs there to force some CTs out, of, out into the open for, for the pick off there. Device was waiting patiently, and now they're pushing Ali. This might be a faster round. There goes Dupree after picking off Nafly device as well. Going around the back of the site. Rush can't do anything about it. Three players left to stop Astralis from winning ECS Season 2. Mixwell's on fire. He's in trouble. He has no stress. And boy's getting traded. Still alive. Now he's the last man standing. But he can't do it. Astralis are your ECS Season 2 champion 2016. They've done it, James. They've finally done it. Astralis have put themselves back up there.